This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video describes how to use non-financial performance measures to evaluate the performance of a company. Uh, in particular, we're going to focus on something called the balanced scorecard. So although there are many financial measures that are important in evaluating companies, and I have lots of videos out there describing different financial ratios and measures that can be used uh, to evaluate companies, many organizations use a mix. They use a mix of both financial and non-financial measures to evaluate performance. So we're going to talk here about those non-financial measures that uh, at least start the discussion of those non-financial measures that can be used to evaluate companies. And just a couple of examples at the bottom here to give you a sense of what we're talking about. Airlines, such as Southwest Airlines or United Airlines, they track the percentage of on-time arrivals. That is a non-financial performance measure. So they might have something like 90% of our flights arrive on time. Um, again, that's non-financial. Uh, delivery companies such as FedEx, Federal Express, or uh, UPS, United Parcel Service, they monitor the percentage of on-time deliveries of packages. Again, that's a non-financial performance measure, but it's important to the company. So to formalize this discussion a bit, we're going to use the, the balanced scorecard as a guide uh, to, to look at both financial and non-financial measures. We're going to push the financial measures off fairly quickly because we've talked a lot about those in separate videos and focus on the non-financial measures. But the balanced scorecard uh, talks about both and how it's important uh, that companies and organizations use both measures to not only motivate employees but also to evaluate the performance of employees as well. So these measures are separated into four categories using the balanced scorecard. The first is financial and then internal business process, learning and growth, and customer. So we're going to take a look at some examples of those next. So how does the balanced scorecard use the, some, some alternative measures to uh, evaluate performance? Well, first of all, we've got the financial category, and, and we use financial measures for that purpose, things like the gross margin ratio or the current ratio or the price earnings ratio. So again, those are all described in a separate set of videos. So, so we get into the second bullet point here, the other three categories, and those typically include non-financial measures, such as quality of the products or services that we're providing, or the uh, number of customer complaints that we receive or the hours of employee training that we provide for our employees. Hopefully that results in better services being provided. Um, so those are just some quick examples of non-financial measures that we can take a look at. The goal, this is very important here, this bullet point right here, the goal then is to link both financial and non-financial measures to the company's strategies and goals. Um, and hopefully that will result in uh, improved performance. That really is the goal. We want to set up measures, both financial and non-financial, that promote the company's strategies and goals. So here are some examples of measures that are used for each of the four categories of the balanced scorecard. In the first column, you'll see here, and these are simply examples. Companies can have many, many more than what you see here. But under financial, we've got uh, gross margin ratio, uh, return on assets, receivables turnover, and inventory turnover. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those because, again, those are in separate videos. But then let's, let's start to move our way to the right so you get a sense of what we mean by these other three categories. So we've got the internal business process, and that would be uh, some potential measures here would be, for example, the defect-free rate. If we are building products, for example, let's say we're Ford Motor Company building a truck, uh, what percentage of those trucks that are going out are defect-free? What is that defect-free rate? With the idea that we want to uh, improve that defect-free rate over time. Um, what is the customer response time that we provide? So if we are, for example, a service provider and a, a customer calls us, let's say we are a restaurant that takes orders by phone, how quickly then do we get back to the customer if they call us on a Friday evening at our busiest time? That would be another example. Uh, it could be capacity utilization. We want to know how well we take advantage of the capacity that we have as a production company or if we have products that, uh, like Apple that um, depend on coming up with new products over time, then how long does it take us to do that? So those are some examples of measures that would be used for internal business, uh, the internal business process side of the house. 
And then we've got this next category, the, the learning and growth. So what type of training do we provide for our employees? How much, how many hours do we provide our employees? Do we uh, survey our employees? Are they satisfied with their work? Do we have employee turnover? We'd like to reduce that employee turnover rate if at all possible. And so that's something that we could measure within our company. And uh, what if we are, let's say, a retail company like Home Depot, what are the number of employee accidents that occur within our company? And of course, we'd like to reduce that, the number of accidents. So again, just some examples of learning and growth measures uh, that we might use. Then going to the fourth column here, we're talking about uh, customers and uh, measures that we might use with our customers. And, and we may, for example, survey our customers. I'm sure many of you have been out there where you're surveyed after going to a store. They'd like us to fill out a survey online and how our experience was. That would be an example. Um, we might choose to uh, provide customer surveys and get that information and see how satisfied our customers are with the services or the uh, goods that we provide. How many customer complaints do we get? Uh, let's take a look at those and try to reduce those. What is our market share relative to the overall market that we are serving? We'd like to increase that. Most companies would over time. Uh, what are the number of products that are returned to us uh, by our customers? Again, we'd like to reduce that over time. So these are just some examples of non-financial measures. Um, these columns right here, these are examples of non-financial measures that we might want to use within our company to measure our performance and evaluate our performance.